Hello, my name is Alan Foom and today I'm going to talk about advantage door barrels. Why some barrels are better than others in terms of uh, what oil companies think. So what is an advantage oil barrel? So it's a barrel that has a premium in terms of several factors as far as the market's concerned. Now I've done a video on different types of market crudes. So what's the difference between Brent and WTI and WCS and Urals, etc. on my YouTube channel and different market crews have different prices, depending on the demands of the market. But this is not about that. So an advantage barrel isn't just in terms of the community of uh, commodity markets, but in terms of also advantage for investors, in terms of politics, in terms of society. So I'm going to discuss why an advantage barrel is important for oil companies. Now let's first of all set the scene. So this is a long term oil demand forecast. Now you can see it's pretty variable. So on this graph, this is history. Since the year 2000, rise with the Great Recession of 2008, then boom, COVID happened, big fall in demand, and we've had a recovery since. But what we don't know is what's going to happen next. So the different forecasts in different organizations, um, EIA, IEA, Shell and BP for different types of scenarios. So you've got everything from net zero, where you have a significant fall in oil demand by 2050, to slight falls for uh, evolving technology uh, scenarios where the world gets greener to plateaus uh, to potential continued rise which is what the american eia thinks so we just don't know but if we're in a relatively low demand scenario where we're going to have a peak demand of some sort an advantage barrel gives you a possibility of making more money as an oil company so some barrels will be more advantage than others under these scenarios. And some of the factors will be just good things to do anyway. So what are these factors? So I'll talk about all these individually. Cost, how much the barrel costs to produce. Politics, the political situation that the barrel is located in. Fiscal, in terms of taxation. Environmental impact. Now, oil, oil barrels will have environmental impact, but some will have more impact than others. In terms of, poly, in terms of scalability. Do you have to have a mega project or can you develop incrementally? Which also has an impact on investment profile and timing. And what I think is actually the most important for me is community relations, because we operate amongst communities, we impact communities, and we need to try to make as positive an impact as possible under the circumstances. So first of all, costs. Now this is a graph from Rice Energy. Now other uh, information providers such as Woodmac, IHS, Platts, etc., produce this sort of graph. And these are the break-even prices for different types of project. They're all slightly different, but uh, all pretty similar. So what you want to do is you want to have your oil barrels towards this end, towards a relatively low break-even price end. So you can take advantage of any high prices. And if there's a low price environment, you're still OK. So you need to try to lower your capital expenditure, or CapEx, lower your OPEX, and lower your future decommissioning costs, and also transportation costs, etc. that come into that. Then you have politics. Now, I have both Russian and Ukrainian ancestry, so the current war is impacting me personally. I mean, I do have distant relatives in both countries, and it's very painful. Now, you have geopolitical context. Now, these two chaps control a quarter of the world's oil supply. You have potential for sanctions, both in terms of actual sanctions on your operation, but also sanctions in terms of uh, embargoes, etc., on exporting your oil. Threats of expropriation, where the government effectively confiscates your assets in the country, and government relations, both your relations with the government in country and also the relations between your host government and the government in which you're registered as a country, as a company. All difficult, complicated situations. An advantageous barrel will also have favorable, stable fiscal taxation. You need relatively low taxes. Now, for some countries, uh, Oil revenue is a major source of, um, of income. And, um, you know, we're talking about Middle East mainly, but also some other countries. And you'd want, but you'd want it as low as possible. It generally tends to be uh, countries with uh, difficult geological situations tend to have favorable tax regimes and vice versa. But what you don't want, you really don't want, is unpredictable, capricious changes. So, for example, windfall taxes. You know, there's a windfall tax just being imposed on the oil industry in the UK difficult times. And you want sensible regulation. So you work closely with the government to produce regulations that are fit for purpose, that ensure safety, ensure environmental protection, 
and do so in a reasonable manner. And then there's the environment. Again, a very important topic. We want to minimize the impact of what we do as much as we possibly can. So advantageous uh, barrel will have as low an impact as possible. Now there are several factors. First of all, flaring and venting. Now flaring is an absolute abomination. I've got a video describing why it's so bad. And you want to try to keep that as low as possible. Leaks and pipelines. Make sure that you do not damage the environment through pipeline leaks. Disposal of waste. Disposal of uh, produced water. Doing that in an effective way. Now there's uh, potential induced earthquakes in places like Texas and Oklahoma due to that. Damaging the landscape when you're working on land and try to reclaim the landscape after that, like the Canadian tar sands. Damaging wildlife. And electrifying platforms to try to reduce the use of fuel or to reduce your scope one and scope two emissions. Now scope three is the responsibility of the end user, the, uh, uh, the customer, but you want to try to keep your scope one and scope two as low as you reasonably can. And maybe offset that to try to get to individual net zero. And some European IOCs are moving towards that direction. It's less of an issue for North Americans, even less of an issue for NOCs, but that's another topic for another video. Then your profile for your timing. So the advantage all barrel will be brought to market quickly. If you are in a situation where you are have got peak demand, you may not want to be stuck with decade-long mega project. You might want a quick uh, payback through infrastructure-led expiration. But you may want to look at scale, so new plays versus play extensions, frontier versus known plays. And different companies will have different philosophies, different strategies. There's no one right answer that fits all. You have to think of what is the right answer for you. And coming closely to that is scalability. So projects that are scalable. Now, there are two examples, two end members here. I mean, this is Prelude floating LNG platform. Costs, oh, God. Um, was it $10 billion? Anyway, a lot of money in the Northwest Shelf of Australia. You know, that only comes as the size XXL. Where well, this is a well powered in, in America uh, using uh, shale oil wells, uh, fracked wells, which is relatively small. I mean, that's less than the size of a football field. And you drill them one at a time, you frack them and complete them one at a time. Obviously, the different scales, different philosophies. But one thing we need to think about as an industry, and we have a real problem with, is moving towards industrial factory style rather than bespoke engineering. And for instance, there are 20 different types of subsea uh, production uh, valve. Why can't we have two or three or one standard one that kind of fits all and gets interchangeable and try to smooth your investment profile, particularly if you're having to raise money on the capital markets. And then what I feel is the most important one, community. The advantage barrel will be in areas with companies that have good community relations, working together with the people we work amongst. It's vital to have good relations with the communities because they're impacted by our actions. So you have two examples. You have a bad example in Nigeria with oil spills, Niger Delta onshore, and you have a good example in Canada where you've had tar sands. So this is a during picture where people are mining tar sands, and this is an after picture after land reclamation to try to get the environment back to where it ought to be. I'd rather be here. Most people would. So to sum up, advantage all barrels of cost, politics, fiscal, environment, scalability, community, investment profile and timing. And different companies and societies will find different importance to these criteria. Some companies, some things would be more important than others. So we need to understand the societies we work in, societies plural, not just Western society, but also where you're working with, and try to balance all these criteria. And it's not easy. It's hard. So thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.